Big congratulations on the victory. I mean, uh, step in on short notice, take home a little extra money. I mean, uh, I guess mission accomplished, right? How's the, how's the feel right now? Yeah, man, mission accomplished. Uh, extremely happy I was able to get that call. I was uh, in the middle of the mountains or out National Forest, northwestern Colorado. No service. A buddy of mine had a little bit of service, and uh, my coach called my wife. My wife called his sister. She texts him. We're sitting around a campfire. By the grace of God, his phone goes off. And I'm not going to lie, when he looked over, he's like, I got some news you might want to. I was drinking a Coors Light, sitting by the campfire. He's like, I got, I got some news you, you might not. I don't know what, how you're going to feel. I was like, what? He's like, you, you got offered a fight next weekend. This is Sunday night. I said, no way. No way am I taking that fight. <laughs> and we sat there a minute. My other buddy, who, who's one of our coaches, he kind of looks over after a couple minutes. He's like, you're not going to call coach? I'm like, dude, no way. I'm getting up and shooting an elk tomorrow. And then I got to think that we were talking about it. I was going to be here anyway, cornering my teammate Jordan Williams, who unfortunately just took a loss. I feel really bad for him. He looked great in round one. And uh, I got to thinking, man, I'm going to be here anyway. There's no way I can be here and, and still tell the UFC no. So I got to think about it. We packed up, drove home Monday morning. I was on a plane Tuesday, ready to go get a victory. How many more Coors Lights did you have after you made the decision? I had one more. So <laughs> we, we were already about, you know, seven, eight deep. I'm like, hey, man, I got, we're already in it. So let's have one more. Enjoy the night. We sat there and talked and uh, went to bed and packed up. Oh, I, I can respect that. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about the performance overall? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you'd like to come in and get a stoppage, but on a week's notice, I mean, how did you feel about it? Yeah, it's starting to feel a little bit better. I really wanted to finish. I was so excited, man. The crowd, I had a welcome, a warm welcoming at uh, weigh-ins, at the ceremony of weigh-ins. And, you know, I've only been fighting at the Apex, so I haven't been out. And to actually, like, hear the crowd get excited, man, that felt good. And then walking out, dude, that I'll never forget that. That was one of the coolest things ever. Uh, the crowd starting to chant USA. I thought that was so awesome. And, uh, yeah, man, su super excited to, to get the job done. I... I felt like I controlled the fight the entire time. So when I heard 29-28, 29-28, you know, you start thinking a little bit. They said 30-27. I'm like, there's no way I lost this fight. But then you just don't know, you know. But, uh, yeah, I thought I controlled the fight from start to finish, used my range well. Well, you know, on five days' notice, I train full time, but it's different. When, you know, when I'm in a camp, I have no options. You know, if my buddies are doing something, I can't. You know, I'm, I'm dialed in. When I'm not in a camp, I got a little bit of leeway, you know. So I felt good to go in there and test myself. My cardio felt great. i uh, just really proud of myself for staying ready and being able to take that call. Yeah. I guess the only criticism might be the eye pokes. I mean, uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly don't mean to do that. I, I've hand fight a lot. Um, the, one of them I thought went up his nose. I did feel it kind of, it might have been the eye. Uh, I was, you know, extremely apolo apologetic to him. I have no intentions of uh, fighting dirty, but, you know, he was a great fighter. He hit me with a couple hard shots, beat up my front leg a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, it was a great war. I'm sure it'll take a little bit to soak in, like, this whole experience and everything, right? But you're kind of wrapping up, like, the best year of your career, right? I mean, what's, what's the feel like right now? Oh, it feels good, man. It really does. I told my coach before we went out, I was like, this isn't about what I've done the last month. This is about what I've done the last decade. And another buddy told me, to that, told me that, and I really took that in. I was like, you're right, man. Um, it's about what I've done the last decade. So this has been an unbelievable year. And my, uh, you know, the way I see it, I'm 4-0. I thought the Kunt Lava fight... You know, when, when the guy that you fight to a draw looks, grabs you, we had the beef or whatever, he grabbed me before I walked out, he looked me in the eye and said, you won that fight. I know I won that fight. He knows I won that fight. So I, I consider myself now 5-2 and two in the UFC, 4-0 this year. Hell of a year, man. I'm ready to uh, start 2022 the same way. That's awesome. Last thing for me, I was going to ask kind of what's next. I mean, uh, you want a little time off now? Like you said, it has been a busy year. What's, what's the plan? Are there names, dates? Yeah, I think I've earned a little bit of time off. Again, though, I, I mean, this is what I do, man. I, I use my body as a pro for my profession, and uh, so I got to, you know, keep my nose on the grindstone. It is about to be bird season. I'm a big upland hunter. I've got a bird dog, and uh, opening season's next Saturday, so we're going to be out chasing some pheasant. We're going to be doing that quite a bit the next couple months. I got a trip planned to South Dakota. Um, so yeah, man, I'm excited for that. But I'll get, I'll still be in the gym, you know, helping my teammates, uh, keeping myself prepared, and then. You know, maybe uh, early next year, springtime. I don't know. You know, I, I say that, and then I could get a call a couple weeks from now and say yes. Who knows? <laughs> Definitely. Uh, your previous UFC run, you obviously fought in front of crowds, but you didn't get a win. This is 
obviously your first UFC win in front of fans. So did this feel, or I mean, you probably fought in some, like a smaller capacity at the Apex, but sold out arena. Did this feel at all like a semi re UFC debut in front of the fans finally? Like finally get to see you perform? Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. I've been telling everybody I can't wait for a crowd. I can't wait to see the fans. And then when I, you get so used to the Apex, right? The Apex became really comfortable to me. I loved being isolated. I loved not seeing even my wife. I loved not having any joy the whole week until after the fight. We got here on a Tuesday. Well, it was Tuesday late, so Wednesday. I started seeing fans coming up with pictures and stuff. I quickly called my coach. like, man, I kind of miss the apex where I don't see anybody. Like, I thought I missed the crowd. Uh, but I do like being isolated. But at the same time, man, it was so awesome uh, interacting with the fans. I told uh, Jordan Williams, Jordan to Tony, a couple guys that haven't been there that long, I was like, this is how I remember it 10 years ago, man. I remember being at the same hotel as the fans and, and them swarming you and uh, being so cool. But it, it does, it is a distraction. You know, I, I do like the apex. I do like not seeing anybody, my wife included. You know, I, I, uh, emotions can make you weak. And I like staying hard all week and, um, you know, not seeing anybody until afterwards. And then, and then we go celebrate. But, man, this was something I'll never forget. And then obviously given your history in glory, do you think it's time that fans and pundits start adding you to the list of best current strikers in the UFC right now? Absolutely, man. And, and you know what? I hope that just my body of work uh, speaks for itself. I, I, I've been through it to get to it, man. I competed with some absolute monsters. A lot of guys in the States. One of them fighting on this card. Tonight, yeah, absolutely. I've went toe-to-toe -to -toe with guys like that. I've, when you lock horns with guys like that, Alex Pereira, Simon Marcus, Murad Buziti, Michael Dute, when you lock horns with the Daniel Lunga, when you lock horns with those guys, it makes you a different animal, man. And that's what I tell people. You don't, you have to go through it to get to it. And those guys made me better, you know. And I took my lumps. I took my losses like a man. But I didn't run away. I kept coming, and it's made me the fighter I am today. So, does, were you ever able to get that elk, or did it get away free this time? I would. I, it eluded me this time, but I, did, I didn't get enough time in there. But we saw tons of animals. A, a good buddy of mine was able to put down a doe the first day. So, Saturday night, we were eating back straps at the campfire, and uh, we, we had them spotted, man. I was going to get them Monday morning, but unfortunately, I had to go hunt the hunter. When you watch the replay back, a lot of people will say one of the more entertaining parts of the commentary is Joe Rogan said, you know, he should wear on him. This guy was out hunting elk a week ago. <laughs> yeah, man. And that's another thing. So when he, they told me who it was, John the Hunter Allen, I mean, I'm like, we, we got to go hunt the hunter. It's just everything. The stars line up, man. When you see the signs, you got to you got to see him. You got to accept him and, and go with him. Congrats on the win. Thank you, man. Anything else? All right. Thank you, guys.